Okay, so sorry, it looks like it's on like a minute delay. So I'll check back in to make sure that it's actually working, but look at all that snow, huh? All right. Uh, so I'm not gonna, uh, I don't have dual screen here, so I'm not gonna be able to check out the comments. So uh, it's, it's just gonna be me uh, doing some exercises here. Uh, so I've got my Eclipse IDE open here. Uh, the form that I thought that this would take is I'm simply going to take, uh, say, three exercises from last semester uh, from CSCE 155E uh, that you probably did either in your homework or uh, I've got the final exam as well. And we're going to do uh, as many of them as we can. Uh, they're all going to incorporate uh, ma the major elements that we've already co covered uh, in Java, you know, the basic data types, strings and processing, file I.O., loops, stuff like that. Uh, so the first one here is from assignment four, where you take an HTML file and then you scrub it out. Uh, basically, you have to read in the file uh, and then you have to convert some of these characters. So the, the ampersand, you have to replace that with this uh, HTML escape sequence. Uh, the less than character, you have to replace that with this, uh, this HTML uh, escape sequence. Uh, now, in general, you need to escape a lot of different uh, special characters. We're only going to worry about these four here. Uh, before I get started, though, I need to make sure that we're actually working. So it looks like we're working now. Good. Uh, and again, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do all my classes like this, but uh, I'm just wanting to make sure that it's actually working. And again, I'm not going to be, I'm not on dual screen here, so I'm not going to be able to uh, check out any comments. Uh, this video will, of course, is also recording and it'll be available for anybody who's not uh, with us on the live coding event here. Uh, so uh, I've got my Eclipse open here. I'm just going ahead and create a new class. I'll call it HTML Scrubber. Okay. Remember, all of your classes should be upper camel cased. Uh, that's why it's uppercase H, lowercase S, and everything else is lower. Uh, uppercase H, uppercase S, and everything else is lowercase. Um, so uh, I do need a, pu a, a public method here. So public static void main. And if I had paid attention, I could have auto generated that when I created the class. So let's just go ahead and outline this. First of all, we're going to want to open the file for reading. Uh, we're going to process it, read it line by line, and store it in one large string. Right? Then I will want to replace uh, the four special characters with, a, with the escape sequences. Uh, and then four, let's go ahead and dump or write the uh, result to a new file. Okay, so pretty straightforward here. Uh, now, if you, if you did this in C last semester, of course, it's uh, it's going to be a lot more uh, lower level work because you don't have the uh, the, the large uh, standard library that you have uh, with, with that you do with Java. Uh, so we've covered file I.O. Uh, uh, I'm just going to hard code the, uh, the file name. Uh, and I don't have a file example here, but we will uh, we'll have to grab one for testing. Uh, but we, to create a new file, it's going to be file F is equal to new file. Right? And I'll go ahead and make sure that the file goes into this data folder over here uh, in, the, uh, in the project. And that, then I can just open it as data slash, uh, I don't know, index.html. That's what I'll call it. So again, you can hover over things and import, and it'll automatically take care of that import up here for you. Uh, I'll, here's another uh, uh, bad habit to get into, and uh, that if you you can use wildcards up there, but you shouldn't because that brings absolutely everything in uh, that's in that package. You should be more intentional and only bring in that which you are actually going to use. So I've got my new file here, and again, the easiest way to do file input and then file uh, file input for Java is simply going to be using that scanner class, new scanner, and we'll pass it off to the file so that it's scanning that file and we can read from that file. And again, you'll have to import that. Now, immediately we're going to have a uh, we're going to have a compiler error here uh, because uh, operating a new scanner 
throws one of those checked exceptions. Remember, a checked exception is an exception that you have to deal with, uh, that you have to surround it with a try catch or add a throws declaration or something like that. Uh, I'm going again. I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch and release. So I chose to go ahead and try, uh, surround it with a try. Try this dangerous code. Uh, if there's a file not found exception, then it'll come down here to this catch statement. And instead of doing anything with it, I'm just going to rethrow it. I'm going to catch and release it. I'm going to throw a new runtime exception, which is an unchecked exception. That's going to be an exception that you don't have to surround with a try catch. And I'm going to still to simply rethrow it as a, an error here. And actually, we could probably demonstrate this right now because I don't have that file over here. When I go ahead and hit run, right? File not found exception, no no such file. I rethrow that, and then it results in a uh, in a fatal error here, and the uh, stack trace being printed down here to the standard uh, standard error output. Uh, so let me go ahead and take care of that now by creating a new file called index.html in that data folder. Uh, and I don't have any uh, uh, I don't have any data here right now, but we can go ahead and grab like uh, a really quick. Uh, HTML uh, sample. I don't know. Uh, yeah, W3 school, three schools should be a good uh, an HTML document here. All right, I'll go ahead and grab that, put that over here, and I will also want some uh, uh, some ampersands here. So um, uh, this is my f and this is my second or something. Uh, I will also want, uh, what else are we scrubbing? We're scrubbing quotes here. So let me go ahead and I'll go ahead and put the, the first into quotes at the, uh, at the top, okay? So there's my input file, right? And we've written code here to open the file for reading. Now we need to read it line by line and store it into one large string. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and put, create a string here called file contents. And I'll initialize that to the empty string. Uh, and now remember that you want to read every single line of the file. Uh, and the scanner makes that really easy because all you have to do is create a while loop while uh, S, uh, uh, the scanner has next line. While it has another line, go ahead and read that next line. String line is equal to S dot next line. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to bring this S out here. And there we go. Now, now that scanner is in scope, and I can work with it down here. Uh, I'm, get, I'm still getting these uh, these lines because um, for various reasons I didn't close the scanner. I'll go ahead and take care of that down here. Um, I'll show you another trick. Well, uh, no, uh, you can use. Uh, so uh, what I was thinking there was that you can use uh, try with resources, and I might show that at the end, but it's not that big of a deal. So I've got the line, and I'm just simply going to concatenate it to the file contents, right? Plus equal, uh, and now I can go file contents, and then concatenate the next line, right? Or I can use shorthand here, uh, a compound assignment operator, to create that line. Now, here's a poor man's way of debugging. Let's see if that actually worked by printing out the file contents, right? There. Now I should get the file contents that look like something like this to the standard output down here. And I don't. Right? Why? Because the scanner does not preserve endline characters. We can do that pretty easy by restoring that endline character right here when we concatenate the line. And when I do that, now I get this as expected. Uh, I don't like the poor man's way of debugging. Right? What I want to do is set a breakpoint instead, okay? Uh, and I don't have some code here, so let me go ahead and add one more piece of code. Uh, let's, uh, or I can, mm, int x. I'm just going to put a, a do nothing line here uh, so that I can actually have a breakpoint and you can't see it there, but uh, uh, there is a breakpoint. Uh, remember that you can run the debugger by clicking this little uh, bug up here, and that changes you over into the de debugging uh, perspective, or you could just click the, the bug up here uh, so that you have uh, variables up here. And let's actually run it. Oops, I don't have a 
there. Nope. Okay. Put one there. It was not accepting my uh, my uh, breakpoint right there because it would probably be just because it's a do nothing align. All right, so uh, here the, we've got the file contents here. Uh, now it's it's initially it's empty. So when I when I click continue, it's going to run through until it hits this breakpoint again. And so we see. Uh, the, the, come on, right, there we go. I just wasn't clicking it hard enough. Uh, and we see that the file contents have changed. Uh, and that's the first line of the t of, of the uh, file. Then the second line, the third line, the the fourth line, the fifth line, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So that's a, again, that's a reminder of how you use the debugger. Uh, let me go ahead and get rid of this line. You can change back to your perspective. All, all of your perspectives are up here, right? You can you know, add a perspective. Otherwise, common ones are already going to be there, or they'll automatically be there if you ever go into that perspective. I'll go ahead and go back to my Java perspective here, and now I'm back to where I was, uh, where I started. Uh, you can always clear out the console by uh, clicking those uh, X's down there. So now I've got my file contents in one big giant string. Uh, I want to replace the four special characters with the escape sequences. So, for example, I want to uh, replace the ampersand with an amp, right? I want to replace this with ampersand amp, uh, amp and then a, uh, a semicolon. Uh, so now, if, again, if you did this in C, you might remember that you went through and you, you checked for individual instances of characters and then you probably had another string where you had the result and so you copied that instead whenever you hit that character, that ampersand character, then you wrote uh, an amp, uh, the, uh, this, the, these five characters here to the uh, to another string or something like that. We don't have to worry about that level of detail, that, that lower level of detail in a, a programming language like Java, um, because what we can do is if we want to, we can just go ahead and replace everything. So uh, we've got a lot of uh, functionality with that string class. If I have file contents, I can replace all, right? I could replace all ampersands with ampersand amp all right let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like uh, let me go ahead and uh, yeah let's let's actually run this all right and we'll run this up until we get to that point uh, so file contents still has all this stuff there's my ampersand it's still there now when I go ahead and go to the next line of unfortunately it's going to, it's going to stop but it's not changed. One thing to remember is that if you've got a string, a string is immutable. You cannot change the contents. Replace all doesn't change the contents of file contents. Instead, it returns, let's go ahead and hover over it and take a look at it. It returns a new string. Oops, sorry. It returns a new string with the uh, old string contents uh, replaced. So what I, if I want to replace the file contents, I need to go con file contents is equal to file contents re, uh, re, and, re, uh, and replace that. Cancel this. I need to actually spell it correctly. There we go. And we'll run the debugger again. And now when I go to the next line, here's file contents. Take uh, Pay attention to that uh, ampersand there. Now that's changed because we replace that old string with the new string, right? It's as easy as that. You can do this over and over and over again for the four escape sequences that you need. So less than is going to be ampersand LT, less than, greater than, and then the last one was a double quote, and That'll be replaced with quat, right? Good. But you'll see immediately, oh, there's a problem here because I can't use double quotes, uh, you know, naked double quotes inside of my string. So to, to take care of that, I simply need to escape it, okay? Now that I've taken care of all four of those things, I can write the result to a new file. If you, Again, if you want to, let's re run the debugger here and make sure that everything works. There's file contents. And you see that everything has been replaced. 
If you want to see it going line by line, let me go ahead and take away that breakpoint and put another breakpoint over here. And we'll go ahead and restart the debugging process. I'll go ahead and highlight that. The first thing that you'll see is that that ampersand is replaced. Then we replace all less thans. So you can see all of those get replaced. Right? And then you can see all of the greater thans get, and those have now been replaced. And then finally, the double quote, the, the, the only ones are, are right here around that first. So those get replaced. All right, let's go ahead and stop this debugging process and come back over here. Uh, now I just need to write the result to a file. To do that, again, the simplest way that you can do file output is to use a print writer. I'll create a new print writer and let's say that the output file will be in the same folder uh, scrubbed.html instead. Okay. Oops, sorry. I need to create a new file in that. New file. Just like I did with scanner. I'm all, I mean, The difference here though is I'm doing it in one line. This was done on two different lines. Uh, let me go ahead and bring that in. All right. And again, this is going to throw a checked exception, file not found exception. Now, which is kind of stupid because it's actually going to create the file for you. Uh, what the, the, the event in which this would probably occur is if, you, if you, your program doesn't have permission to actually write to that directory. If you were trying to write to a system level directory uh, as a user, uh, then it would probably throw an exception and not, not let you do that. So let me go ahead and surround, uh, oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to surround that with a try catch and do the same thing that I did before of a catch and release. Okay, so throw new runtime exception E. There we go. And once I've created that print writer, pw.print, right, I can print just a string and the file contents to it, right? And pw.close is going to take care of that for me after I'm done. And that reminds me that I probably should have closed my scanner as well up here. After I was done reading it every single line, s.close, go ahead and close it right there. All right. Now let's run this and see if it actually runs. And it does. I'm not printing anything to the standard output anymore. I'm printing it to, printing it to a file instead. And that's going to be over here in data, the data folder. Remember, uh, it didn't show up, right? That's because sometimes in Eclipse, you have to go ahead and go down to refresh or simply hit F5. And you'll see there, there's the result. Some IDEs will automatically refresh in the background. Uh, I think that you could probably change the, uh, the configuration of uh, Eclipse to take do that for you uh, at some cost, I'm sure. So there you go. It's as simple as that, that four-step process. Now, if I were actually turning this in for credit, I would need to come back and provide some documentation, right? At least an author. Uh, this, uh, this class takes care of, of scrubbing the contents of an HTML file, right? Instead of hard coding these, uh, these file names, I'd probably read, want to read them in as command line arguments. Uh, so I'd want to go with args of zero instead uh, as the, uh, the output and args of one as the, uh, as the output file. Remember to actually provide those. All you need to do is go to run configurations and under arguments, you can go ahead and use a data slash uh, index.html, right? Apply and run that and it'll run it as before. Uh, obviously it's not gonna make any changes to it, uh, but now it's using command line arguments instead, at least for the first one. Uh, and of course you'd wanna come, uh, come and, and get rid of your outline. Uh, that was just for me, to, uh, to, for, for, to help you follow along with the instructions that I'm giving you. Uh, but otherwise, that level of commenting and documentation is probably not appropriate. Um, sure, function level uh, documentation, great. Go ahead and put that in. If it makes sense, a main that, that doesn't need that much of documentation, but certainly the class needs documentation. The author, you can go ahead and put in whatever, right? And again, I'm using doc style comments here, okay? So that's the first exercise. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, the second exercise was, let's see, uh, let's minimize this for a second. 
I think I chose Hack 10. Yeah. Hack 10 was a pro tr protein translation. Uh, so given a DNA sequence, which is just a bunch of uh, characters, A, T, C, and G, uh, representing uh, adenine, thiamine, cytosine, and guanine, respectively, uh, we need to translate that into a protein sequence. Protein sequences can actually have 20 different amino acids. Uh, and so three bases, uh, for example, do I have an example here? Let's see. Uh, a, A, A. That translates into K. Right? Uh, TTC, apparently that translates into F. Uh, CGC translates into R. Uh, GTA translates into V. Uh, and the last three, CCC translates into P. Okay? So that's uh, it's pretty straightforward. That Now, the rules for doing this, that's all biology. And when I assigned this, I actually gave a file that looks like this uh, to, to take, take, take care of all of that for you. Uh, let's see, where, where was that first example? AAA goes to K, and there it is. AAA maps to K over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to, I'm going to show you some IDE tricks uh, on how to get this done. Uh, but given, a, uh, given an input file containing a bunch of DNA sequences, you want to output the, uh, the, the, the corresponding protein sequence. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this example that's hard coded in the handout here to see to make sure that we get K F R V P. Right? Uh, we already went over a file I/O, and I'm sure that you can do a re a reproduce that on your own. Uh, what I want to do is I want to just simply take care of the mapping. So, protein translator. Right. Let's go ahead and actually make a function to do this public static string uh, DNA to protein uh, DNA All right so what this function is going to do is this function uh, translates uh, the given DNA sequence stored in DNA it's stored in the string DNA uh, to a corresponding um, a protein sequence, returning the result. Right? That's pretty good documentation, mm -hmm. uh, sufficient documentation at least. Uh, all right, so uh, and of course you'd probably want to put up a header here uh, with at least the author, me. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to split it up into uh, codon, uh, the things that are called codons, that is, uh, or a trigram here, uh, UAA or UAG, right? We're going to want to split it up into threes, 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 just like we did when I described it AAA and then TTC and then CGC, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I believe that there's also a stop sequence. Let's see, where is it? Uh, it's this. UAA, that means uh, that, that gives it a premature stop. So what that means is if you ever encounter UAA, then you need to immediately stop and quit, right? So uh, otherwise, all of the other possibilities here, uh, now with four, uh, four um, uh, amino acids, you have four times four times four, which is going to be 64 possibilities. Uh, and they're all, they're all represented here, I believe. Actually, though, there are two uh, things that, that, that are in the stop sequence. Uh, if you encounter UGA, UGA or, uh, or UAG or UAA, looks like those are stop sequences. Xs are not uh, proteins. So otherwise, uh, if you hit those, then you need to stop the transla translation process. Okay. So hopefully I can get this done. <clears throat> Just a second. Um, the first thing I want to do is, you know what, I want a, I want to use a map. Just like I did over here, uh, I used a, uh, this is not really a protein map, it was simply just a, um, a two-dimensional array of strings and characters. Actually, it was, a, uh, I, I believe that this is actually a, yeah, there it is, it's a struct. Uh, there's a trigram, it's four because 
three characters and then an alternating character and a single character representing the protein. How do I do that in Java? It's much easier to use a map, right? I will map a single string character to, or a, a, sorry, a, uh, a trigram string to, now you could go with a character here, right? Char uh, a single character, that'll be your DNA, uh, that'll be your protein. Uh, but I'm, I, uh, what I'm going to eventually do is I'm going to be concatenating this stuff. So let's just go ahead and map it from a string to a string, right? Uh, and this will be my protein map. Okay. Now I need to import this stuff. And I need to import this. Uh, I created this outside of any function. If I'm going to do that, then what I need to do is I need to make it static. So that this protein map, there's only one of them, and you see that it italicized it, and that's because that this, uh, since this is static, it's now going to belong to the class, and there's only going to be one copy of it, uh, and I can use it down here by simply, I could go with protein map, all right, dot get and put and stuff like that, but it's best, it's better practice if you access it in a static manner. Pro, uh, the name of the class dot and then protein map, and then you can use the getters or whatever, uh, the get or put method or whatever you're gonna do with it, okay? Uh, now this is complaining. Uh, let's see. Hmm, I wonder why it can't infer, oh, cause, probably because this is not imported. There we go. There, now it's, now it's sa satisfied. Uh, so now there's nothing in this map right now. Uh, I do need to put in, say that, a, A, A maps to K, All right? So if I wanted to do that, I could write another function, public static initialize, a public static void initialize, and then go go along protein map dot put, uh, what was it? A, A, A maps to K, All right? And then I could do this another 64 times. You don't want to sit here and watch me do that over and over again. Not only that, but I would have to call this function, if I've got a, a main down here, public static void main string args, right? I would have to explicitly call this function for this protein map to actually be initialized. That's not very good. Uh, it's not a very good design because it kind of breaks abstraction uh, in that uh, if you've got this map and you just load up this class and you expect it to be there, uh, but the, the, then the way that I designed it, uh, well, no, you can't expect it to be there. It, you have to call that function over there and then you can expect it to be there. I don't want to have to do that. So I'm going to show you another trick. This is called a static block, right? By labeling this block of code here as static, that means that, uh, when this class gets loaded up by the Java virtual machine, uh, everything, uh, this is not a function, but everything, every piece of code inside this block is actually going to be executed. So before it, you even call main, before you ever call this DNA to protein method uh, for the first time, all of this code will have executed. And so that's where you can initialize this protein map, uh, or sorry, uh, and put in dot put AAA maps to K, right? Again, I don't think that you want to sit here and watch me do this. Uh, so I should pause and then you can come back in five minutes. Uh, let, me, let me make sure that it's actually still streaming. Okay. Uh, or uh, here's, here's another IDE trick. I've already got it here, right? So what I'm going to do is, uh, forget that, I'm going to go ahead and put it right here. Now this is not Java code, right? Uh, but I can make it into Java code. I'm going to go into block selection mode, okay? And I will go with protein map dot put. It's running OBS, it's running my web browser, it's running Eclipse, it's running a bunch of stuff here. So hopefully, Well, while we're waiting on that, let me go ahead and go back over here and see if, yep, still no snow. That's kind of ridiculous.
Okay, there we go. Oops. Okay. So it still have it still has a problem with that because I didn't complete all my typing. Uh, let's go ahead and go down here. So again, I'm block selection mode on a Mac. That's going to be Option Command A, uh, and then you can write basically as columns here. Uh, now I also need to replace all of these single quotes here with double quotes. And, oops, the closing single quotes with double quotes. And we'll end the lines of in each one of these with a semicolon. There we go. And I'll go ahead and get rid of all of those commas there. Once I do that, hopefully it's now satisfied with everything. There, all right? So again, for those stop sequences, we're gonna get back a lowercase letter x. Uh, and we can check for that in our function, okay? But now we've at least got our protein map set up here. Again, maps are awesome data structures to use. Uh, it's, it's, it's like a, an array on steroids because you can map anything to anything else. Uh, and the way that you've traditionally used uh, uh, static arrays, that goes out the window one, the first time you see the power of a map or a dynamic data structure like this. Okay, so I'm going to go by threes. Uh, so just this is just going to be a traditional for loop, or int i equals zero. i is less than DNA. Now remember, I want to go over the string here by threes. And so I'm, to get the length of the string, it's going to be dot length, i plus equals 3. All right? So that's going to go 0, 3, 6, 9, etc. It's going to go by 3s. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get that substring. Again, fortunately, there is a nice little substring, uh, begin index and end index. The beginning index will, of course, be i. The end index will be i plus 3, and that's going to be uh, exclusive. So uh, think about on the first iteration here, it's going to be 0, and then plus 3 is going to be 3. I don't want 0 through 3 because that would be 0, 1, 2, and 3. That would be four characters. Uh, but fortunately, if you read the uh, documentation on substring, it actually goes up to n index minus 1. So in other words, it's inclusive and then exclusive. And so this is exactly what I want here. I want this substring. Uh, string sub, uh, or uh, it'll be the trigram, right? Because that's what it is. Then I just access my protein map up here, right? Pro protein translator, translator dot protein map. Now remember, I put stuff in. I mapped UGU to C. Uh, I'm to get stuff out. I just need to use get, and then I'll get the key, which is the trigram, right? And that returns a protein. Uh, and then what I, can, what I can do is I can keep track of uh, the, the actual protein. Uh, so string uh, pro, uh, protein. Uh, I'll go ahead and do it up here. I'll call my my resulting string protein. And instead of getting this, uh, um, well, uh, I'll call this one result because I do want to make a distinction there. So I've got the single protein here. I need to check to make sure that if, if that's a lowercase x, I should stop. Whatever I've done so far, I'm done, right? So uh, if protein, now you can't go equals equals x like this, right? You can, but that's not going to get you what you want. This is, remember, it's, it's comparing memory addresses. Is this, uh, this string's memory address equal to that string's memory address, not the contents. To do that, uh, to determine if uh, if they're equal, you actually need to call the equals method. So if the protein equals x, that means that we should stop. Now to jump out of a for loop, uh, this is kind of bad practice, but that's okay. Uh, it's, it's just a quick and dirty solution. Break is actually going to break out of the for loop and come down here, where I return my result. Okay. Now again, I don't I don't want to be leaguer. Oops, looks like we've got a problem here. What is it? Oh no, it's just a bad highlighting here. If I close this and then open it up again, yeah, it's gone now. 
All right. All right. So let's go ahead and use the uh, the example that was in the handout here. Uh, we, I don't want to go over uh, file I/O yet again. So here's my DNA. And let's go ahead and convert that to a protein. So string protein is equal to DNA to protein DNA. And then we'll go ahead and just print it out to the standard output instead of printing it out to a file. It'd be the same process as we, as we did before. I want to print out the protein there. So if this all worked, I should expect KFRVP. Oops. We are getting a null pointer exception here. This is excellent because it gives. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the problem is, but it's excellent because uh, it means that we can have an opportunity to use our debugger for real this time. So let me go ahead and go into this. Uh, so the trigram here is AAA. If I go to the next line, protein is K. That works perfectly. So I'll go ahead and continue. The next substring here. I is now three. The next uh, substring is TTC, which is exactly what we would expect. Uh, and when we look at the map to get that, uh, that's null. So there is no TTC here for some reason. Oh, you know what? <laughs> it's because I'm, I'm an idiot. I forgot my basic biology. That, that's all right. Uh, I don't know basic bi biology. Uh, you need to first con convert uh, the DNA to RNA. Uh, what, it, it, here we, we need to read AC, ATCG, representing the nucleobases, uh, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Protein sequence is, in, is an organism, uh, or, uh, uh, in an organism consists of two-step process. First, the DNA is translated to RNA by replacing thiamine, so Ts, with Us. So we've, we accidentally skipped that process there. Uh, and that's why we uh, that's why we had T's and we, we don't have T's in our map here maps here at all instead they've all been changed to use that's fine we'll go ahead and stop the process here go back to Java uh, and um, I'm going uh, and as a first step here instead we could we could change the DNA to RNA here so string RNA is equal to the using the same strict uh, the same trick as before DNA dot replace all, uh, or here it's just a single character. So replace the character, uh, what was it, uh, T with U, right? There we go. Uh, and now instead of operating on the DNA, I'm going to want to operate on the RNA, RNA, and the trigram, and everything else looks fine now. Let's go ahead and try it again. Oops. Not printing anything else. Oh, you know what? That's because I wasn't doing anything with the protein, right? I need to have the result plus equals protein. There we go. I didn't need to use the debugger to, to realize that mistake, but at least we weren't getting our, uh, uh, our exception anymore. There we go. KFRVP and KFRVP. Now there's still some bugs here that you might want to take care of on your own. For example, if it's not divisible by three. Let's go ahead and add a C here and see what happens. We're gonna probably get an exception here. Yep, and we do. The string index is out of bounds. When I try to get this substring up here, well, it's looking at that last C and then trying to do two more characters. Those two more characters are no longer there, right? Uh, so one way that you can take care of that is, well, if, if, if there's an extra C here, then you can ignore it. Uh, so what you can do is you can just go ahead and stop short. Right, uh, and take care of that last one separately. Right, this will work for this particular example. Right, uh, it ignores that last C, uh, but it won't work for the original example. Let me go ahead and get rid of that and run it again. We'll, we lost the the, the last uh, protein there, the P protein, uh, and even though it's it's perfectly divisible by three here. Uh, so you you what uh, the, the the better way of doing this uh, is to have let's see. Min or max. Uh, what you would want to go up to if, so we'll have int n, which is going to be equal to, in general, rna.length, right? Now, if n divided by is divisible by three, 
then we're perfectly fine. But if it's not divisible by three, uh, then we will need to subtract off of a, 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 an amount or uh, now I need to think of the math here. Instead, we'll use n there. Uh, the math is going to be uh, what's the remainder? So n is equal to n minus uh, whatever the result is, or whatever the remainder is. So n mod 3. There we go. Is this going to work? Hopefully, this is going to work. And. I think so. Let's go ahead and try it. There, it restores for that one. And then if I add another C in there, it should uh, it, it should still work. Okay, good. And if I add another C in there, yeah, yeah, and it still works. Now, if I added yet another C, now we've got yet another third trigram. I don't know what CCC, uh, oh, you know, I, it, it, we, we knew, know what CCC maps to. It maps to P, so I should get K, F, R, V, P, and then another P at the end here. And it works, okay? All I did here was stop short uh, by taking off uh, the, the, trail, the trailing characters, the one character or the two character uh, that shouldn't have been there, okay? All right, let's check in. Uh, let's see. I don't know what base work means. Uh, but otherwise, nobody else is commenting. So hope how many people are watching? Uh, nine people are watching. Good on you. Uh, <laughs> all right. So last one. That takes care of that. I don't need Adam anymore, I guess. Last one is the most complicated. It's going to be from your final last semester. Uh, your final, remember, I dealt with Pokemon. Uh, that there's a, a, a poke, each Pokemon has an, a, a type of attack or defense. Uh, for example, ice, glass, or fire. Uh, there are, I believe, 100. And, let's see, 151 Pokemon, uh, and uh, the, all their data is stored in the CSV file. Uh, and then we've got the uh, the matchups, like ice versus fire. That has a multiplier of 50%. So in other words, ice is not as uh, effective against fire. It's half as effective against fire. So the the, uh, the exercise here is that uh, given a Pokemon, uh, an attack Pokemon, and a defense Pokemon, uh, you should output something that looks like this. Uh, Jinx, which is of type Ice, attacks Flareon. Uh, I don't, sorry, I don't know any Pokemon, so I just used it for this uh, exercise here. Uh, which is a fire, and it does, you know, 0.5 damage. Uh, this uh, just should still work, and it does. I've got my Pokemon.csv file here. Let me go ahead and grab that, bring it over to Eclipse. I'll put it in the data file here. New file, Pokemon.csv. Yeah, yeah. I don't actually want to open it up in. There we go. I don't want it in Excel, unfortunately. Okay. Ah, sorry. Here, here's a shortcut. I can open with uh, just the text editor. There we go. Um, cut, paste. There are 151 Pokemon, and the, the uh, uh, they have a number, the name of the Pokemon, and their type. Uh, and I think that this is a simplified version because some Pokemon might have multiple types. I just took one. So there's grass, there's water, a bug type, normal, poison, electric, etc., etc. Okay. And there's all 151 of them. Uh, the second file that we used in that final was, here we go. Let's just go, just go ahead and grab the raw here. This is just data. Uh, it is the attack type, the defense type, and then the multiplier. Note that it's not CSV data. It is instead uh, spaced out data. So let me go ahead and call that uh, Pokemon type dot dat. Just dat is short for data. Uh, and again, I will open this up. Open with text editor. It wanted to open it up. <laughs> okay. It wanted to open it up with a VLC media player for some reason. 
All right, there are 324 records there. If you take the square root of that, that tells you how many uh, Pokemon types there are. Square root of, uh, what did I say, 364? Nope, that, that was wrong, 324. So there are 18 types of Pokemon apparently, okay. Oh, now we're getting snow. Wonderful. Okay. Let me t let me go ahead and get rid of this for so that maybe I'll save some CPU cycles here and it won't be as uh, bad anymore. All right, let me go ahead and go back to snow day here and we'll just do all of this in one single class. Um, uh, I'll just call it uh, Pokemon. All right. Now, you could define a Pokemon type and a Pokemon class if you want to, but again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to primarily use maps for this. Uh, I'm going to map the, the straight, because all, all you really need from this is the name and its type. Well, that's a string and that's a string, so I can ma map a Pokemon's name to their type. Let's go ahead and start with a public static void main string args. Right. Let's create a map of strings to strings, right? And we'll call it Pokemon to type, right? Or name to type if you Pokemon name to type if you want. New hash map. There are other implementations of a map if you want to get into it, uh, offering different uh, different pieces of functionality like ordering and stuff like that, uh, uniqueness and what whatever. Th this is this is uh, sufficient for our needs here. So what I want to do is I want to, just as a note here, I want to open the uh, Pokemon, what was it, CSV file and uh, extract all names to types. For example, let's go to the next line here, example, I want to map, what's the first one? I want to map um, however you pronounce that, Scyther, maybe, to bug, all right. All right, so let's open up the file. Uh, again, using a scanner here. Uh, scanner S is equal to new scanner, and then a new file. The file that I want to open is data slash Pokemon.csv. Right. And import file, import scanner. And we're going to have to surround this with a try catch and release. Throw new uh, runtime run time exception D. Get rid of that. And I'll bring the scanner out over here. There we go. And later on, I'll need to close it as well. Let's not forget that. Close the scanner. S dot close. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to read this line by line. So while s dot has next or has next line, whichever one you want to do, right? Uh, string line is equal to s dot next line. Remember, it takes out that end line character for us, so we don't have to worry about that. But this is CSV data. So what I want to do is I want to cut it up. I want to tokenize it, or in Java nomenclature, it's going to be splitting it. So line dot split. And then I will split along uh, commas. Right? You can put a regular expression in that if you really want to. Uh, but the, uh, you, it's just a simple CSV file. That returns an array of strings. I'll call it tokens because that's what they are. Right? Uh, and let's just go ahead and uh, I'm just going to demonstrate this to you. System.out.println arrays.toString uh, so that it looks pretty. Right? Tokens, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate this to you to show you that it actually works. There's, uh, the first one is Bulbasaur, uh, the last one is Mew, and that's what it is right here. Bulbasaur, and then the last one is Mew, and it's psychic, okay? We're only interested in the second and the third tokens, and that's what I'm gonna put into my map. So instead of printing them out, I'm going to put into my map, uh, the Pokemon to type map, dot put, I'm going to map uh, the second token, so token sub one, to the third token, tokens sub two. Right. 
And let me show you what that looks like. System dot out dot print ln. Uh, so uh, that has a built-in two string method that does look like this. Mu2 maps to psychic, Raichu maps to electric, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and there is all 151 of them, right? It's not necessarily an order because hash maps are not ordered. Uh, the, the, if you want ordering on your keys or values, you need to use a, a, a different uh, particular type of map, uh, like, a, like a linked hash map or something like that. Uh, but we at least know that it works. We can close the scanner. Now we've got our map that maps a Pokemon name to a Pokemon type. Now what we need to do is, again, the, uh, the output here is that we've got the name, we've got the type. From the type and this type, what I need to do is I need to find that type in the other file that this versus this gives me this, uh, uh, this multiplier right here. Okay? All right. So now that I'm thinking about it, let's see. One hackish way that we could do this without having to define too much is to uh, is to map. Uh, let's go ahead and create another map here, which is going to be not a string to a string, but it's going to map a string to a double. Right? That's the multiplier. So uh, type versus type, right? And I'll call that's what I'll call it. Now here's what I'm thinking here. Uh, this will map a, uh, po a Pokemon a, 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 a map two Poke on types uh, separated separated by a uh, uh, a uh, space to a multiplier. So for example, it'll map. Let's go over here to this. It'll map electric and water. It'll map electric space water to 2.0. Now this is the quick and dirty way of doing this. Uh, this is not necessarily a great design because there's no semantic meaning that there's a difference here. From uh, the, the, what, what you probably want to do is uh, a map uh, or uh, have a full-fledged type, and then you have a type and a type and maps to another type, and that maps to a uh, a, um, uh, a multiplier. Uh, another way that you could do this is I, I've actually got I think in this project I've got another in my utils over here. I always keep a pair class. Uh, in all my projects, because it's so convenient. This is not built into uh, the, to Java. This is this is a pair class uh, that was written a long time ago somewhere else, and uh, I've just used it. Uh, it's uh, some languages, let's say like Python, allow you to do uh, native tuples, so you can have pairs and triples and quadruples uh, and stuff like that, and you, and use those as one logical type. Uh, Java does not do that. You, you'd have to bring in a library to do something like that, but you can do it with like a pair of strings. So you map a pair of strings to a double instead. Um, I, I'll go ahead and leave that in, and if you want to, I can post the, uh, the pair class, and you can go ahead and change this uh, to, to actually use that instead. But it would actually separate uh, these two things into two separate strings. That would be your key. That would be a pair of strings then maps to this multiplier. For now though, I'll just go ahead and do it the quick and dirty way, okay? Let me go ahead, uh, I've already got my scanner, so what I could do is I could reuse that ver that reference variable. Uh, and instead of opening up the pokemon.csv, it would be open up the pokemon type dot right? Uh, and then I will go ahead and cut and paste these lines as well. Uh, while you still have lines to go, get that line, and tokenize it, but not tokenize it on spaces or uh, commas, but instead on spaces. Right now, that's going to split it up into three: electric, water, and then 2.0. What I want to do is, I actually want to take the first token, token sub zero, concatenate it with that space, restore that space basically, uh, and, uh, and and then map that to this thing right here, uh, which is uh, I want to put in my uh, type versus type map instead. Now it's going to complain about this because even though I can concatenate three strings together as the key, this thing over here, the value that I map to has to be a double. This is a string. So to convert that, I simply use double dot parse double of that one. Now there could be a parsing error here, right? If I gave it like hello instead of 2.0, 
uh, then it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to have a problem with that. Uh, but that it does throw a number format exception, but that's not a checked exception. Uh, if I if, if I screwed up along the way, I want to, I want to let that exception bubble up and become a fatal exception. Okay. Just do a spot check here, make sure that everything's still working. Um, unfortunately, the resolution looks terrible, but uh, that might just be that might just be, okay. No, that was that was just uh, my reception there. Okay. So I've got all that. Uh, let me go ahead and run it and see that it actually works. All right. Well, it works. No exceptions or anything like that. Uh, let me go ahead now and take care of the actual problem here. That if you were to call this, say, from the command line, uh, you would provide it two Pokemon names, and then you would have to have output that looks something like this. So let's go ahead and go go ahead and use the uh, the, the command line arguments. All right. Uh, so string Pokemon name A is equal to args sub zero. That's still a string. And Pokemon B is going to be the second args. Remember, they start at zero. Unlike C, C the zero the uh, is going to be the, um, uh, the the file, the executable file name. Uh, but we don't have that uh, that issue with Java because what what's the executable file name? Well, it's it's built in. It's po it's Pokemon. We don't need that as part of our command line arguments. Um, let me do some basic checking here to show you how you might do it in your uh, in your homework. If the number of arguments, remember we have that length property, is not what we expect. If it's not equal to two, then we can go ahead and tell them about it. System.out.println error uh, expected two Pokemon names. And then we could actually quit on them if we want to. System.exit with an error code. Right? Uh, and this is the standard output. We also have the standard error. And the only difference that that'll make in Eclipse is when we run this, it'll be in red instead, right? Uh, because it's uh, outputting to the standard output. Or it's, it's outputting to the standard error instead of the standard output, which is going to be uh, in regular font and, and black. That's actually configurable if you really want to. You can go ahead and uh, configure your, standard, uh, your console over here. Uh, but otherwise, great. Uh, let's go ahead and provide those names now. Again, to provide command line arguments, you go up to run configuration, go over to args and jinx, and what was the other one? Flare on, All right? Space flare on, and we'll go ahead and apply that and run it. And we don't get that error anymore because now this is jinx and this is a flare on, All right? But we do uh, need to provide this the, the output of the actual program. Uh, now to do that, I'm going to look up their types so string Pokemon uh, type A is going to be, I need to just look at my map here that I've built, dot get Pokemon name A, and the same thing for B, and B. There we go. Uh, and now how do I get my multiplier? So double multiplier. Right. I'm going to have to concatenate this and this, and then look it up in my second map. My second map over here is going to be type versus type dot get. And to do that, I'm just going to simply concatenate. Remember that you'd have to have that space in there and then concatenate. And there's my multiplier, All right? Now, if I've screwed up anywhere along the way here, uh, or if I provide a, an invalid Pokemon name, then this will end up being null. I'll probably have maybe a null pointer exception somewhere. Uh, but otherwise, let me go ahead and make sure that it actually works here first. So system.out.print. I'm going to go ahead and use printf here for the formatting. And this is going to be percent %s, percent %s, percent %s, percent %s. And finally, percent %.2f and the line. And now I just need to provide those five arguments. So the first one is going to be the Pokemon name A, Pokemon type A, and then the same thing but for B, B and B, and then finally the multiplier. There we go. And let's see if it actually works for this particular example. Uh, the solution was that it does 0.5 damage. Let's run it and see if it works. Hey, it works, All right? Um, I don't know too many Pokemon. 
Uh, I've never played the game. Uh, I, uh, let's see. Uh, so I'm just going to have to go to the file and actually pull some stuff out. So I don't know. Um, let's go with Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl, which is rock versus flare on. Let's apply that. So rock versus fire does two times damage. Um, I'm going to have to trust that. Otherwise, I can look it up over here. Find rock and fire. And yep, it does two times damage. Right? Um, so I'm pretty sure that it works. If you want to, you can test for corner cases. Uh, for example, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Electron. Hopefully that's not a real Pokemon. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a framework for building uh, applications. Let's go ahead and run it. Yep, there we go. We get a null pointer exception. Uh, and we get it at line 59. Why? Because when we append, uh, when we, um, uh, when we concatenate null to that, uh, we don't have a type because there is no such thing as a, po uh, as a uh, electron Pokemon. Uh, we could add uh, add some error handling code here instead if you want to. Uh, for example, if Pokemon type A is null. Again, if the uh, if the map here doesn't have this key, then it will return null as a value. So we can check for that. If that's null, or Pokemon type B is null, then we can go ahead and echo an error message instead. The system dot error or out dot print ln no such Pokemon, right? And then we'll go ahead and exit on them too. This is not exit one. Right? And now when I run this, uh, it should say there's no such Pokemon. Uh, otherwise, you can add some error checking code down here. There is a Pokemon. There is a, this. The, there are these two types of Pokemon, or there are these Pokemon, and we get their types. But for some reason, it wasn't in this map. You can double check for that as well if you really want to. Uh, but otherwise, we're now up on an hour here. Let's see. Uh, 11 people have watched. Uh, any, uh, instead of try catch, couldn't we throw an exception, IO exception to the top? Good question. Yes, you could. That's, uh, that's kind of bad practice, though, because it just, uh, it just shifts the burden. Uh, if, I, if you were to do this on a, uh, a method level, right? So it, what, what, what that question was asking is, can you come up here and go throws, um, what is it, file not found exception. That'll be okay for this, uh, throws, sorry. Uh, that'll be okay for the, uh, for the main because the main is the main starting point. So uh, if, if main throws it, then it'll become fatal no matter what. But if this were not main, if you had another function, say, uh, I don't know, public, static uh, void or let's say string compute or I don't know void uh, compute Pokemon right and you did something like this and then throws that that keeps it as a checked exception uh, meaning that if you want to use this method then it, now it's your burden to tr to catch and release it or throw it yet again if, uh, the, the whole reason that the checked exceptions are a bad idea is because you have this ca this kind of crap everywhere in uh, in Java where uh, a function explicitly throws a checked exception that means now you have to try you have to try and catch it or rethrow it uh, so it basically it just shifts the burden uh, from one method to another method and that's why I don't like that solution instead the sol um, the, the best solution that I found for checked exceptions is to simply Catch and release. Rethrow re it as a runtime exception. All right. Good question. Any other questions here? Should do all my classes like this? Okay, sure. Uh, I don't know what base Burke is. Base Burke? I don't know what RT is either. You guys aren't speaking my language. I'm sorry. Uh, or I'm, I'm not interpreting your language. Uh, but in any case, uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to, go ahead and post a Piazza and I can post the, what code we did write if you really want to or that pair class if you find that useful. Um, and uh, uh, I, don't have the, uh, uh, I don't have the snow up anymore, but ho hopefully it'll actually start snowing to justify uh, this day off. Uh, so have a good day.